a new law could change Hong Kong's way of life. This is why. After the Hong Kong protests of 2019, China's government has had enough. We're told a new security law is aimed at safeguarding and enforcing national security. And Hong Kong's chief executive sees no issue. So protest itself is an expression of freedoms and rights and opinions, if it is done in a legal way, okay? But for some, this is far from okay. If this law is imposed on us, that will be the end of Hong Kong. Former Hong Kong governor Chris Patton says this is a comprehensive assault on the city's autonomy, rule of law and fundamental freedoms. And US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo argues Hong Kong is no longer autonomous from China. But are these criticisms fair? Well, the law is being imposed by Beijing after no meaningful consultation with Hong Kong. That's a significant change. And the law bans treason, secession, sedition, subversion and indeed leaves room for anything deemed a threat to national security. This inevitably changes what can and can't be said and done in Hong Kong. This, though, is how Carrie Lam sees it. Uh, we are a very free society, so uh, for the time being, people have this uh, freedom to say whatever they want to say. A free society for the time being. That phrase has not eased concerns, nor has a different law been considered in Hong Kong that will make disrespecting the Chinese national anthem a crime. While we've seen protests, clashes with the police, and arrests too. And to understand why passions are so inflamed, we need to go back to 1997, when Hong Kong was handed back to the UK. The communist government sees the return of the colony as the end of a chapter of shame in the history of China. China promised to maintain Hong Kong's unique way of life, an arrangement called One Country, Two Systems. But there's always been tension. We saw it last year. Protests grew and grew, driven by a fear that Beijing was extending its reach. That fear hasn't gone away. Now, the counter-argument here is that 2019 showed that better laws were needed to stop violence like this. This to Beijing was completely intolerable, and having seen previous efforts to negotiate a new security law fail, this time it didn't ask. Whether this law is needed or not, Hong Kong's autonomy has been diminished, and America's noticed. Here's the BBC's bureau chief in Washington. US now seems to be saying Hong Kong no longer has any special status. Well, this special trade status is worth billions to Hong Kong's economy, and it's conditional on Hong Kong being sufficiently autonomous. This is President Trump's spokesperson. He said to me uh, that he's displeased with China's efforts and that it's hard to see how Hong Kong can remain a financial hub if China takes over. So Hong Kong's economy could change too, all of which means the stakes are very high. And from an economic point of view, this might well be a loose, loose, loose situation for China, US and Hong Kong. For China, this is about national pride and demonstrating the government's ability to control and govern. For Hong Kongers, this is about their way of life. That's why it matters so much to both.